In the last video, we made this all from scratch, but today I'm going to show you why it's not actually a great idea to use this pass on distribution system. I do apologize that I made you make this from scratch, but this is all part of a series where we're going to build the optimum model in Excel to predict football matches from scratch. Okay, so obviously, if you haven't seen last last week's episode or last time's episode, or whatever. Then we made this little system. Obviously, to convert all these to odds, you can just do equals one over probability to get all the odds, whatever. And then, then we're looking all good. And say we wanted to bet for value, we could then say, say we thought this was equals one over that. The odds were three point zero four. If we thought the odds should actually, no, that's right. We think the odds should be three point zero four. If they're actually two, there's no value in that, so we shouldn't bet on it. If there are four, there is value, so we should bet on it, that sort of system. But today I'm going to show you why Poisson distribution isn't actually the best system. And I'm going to show you a very, very simple example why. And in the next episode, it's only going to be a short episode. In the next episode, we're going to build up this to make it that little bit better to show you guys exactly why we can improve this model. Okay, so let me show you the first principle of why this isn't a great idea okay so let's start by looking at this from the basic point of view of it's based on probability right and you might be sitting there looking going okay that means nothing to me right we're looking at these values here and eventually we're looking at these values in the correct score data but the most important thing in this instance, it's to look at home, the draw, and the away results, the uh, probabilities there, okay? So obviously the higher the probability, the lower the odds. So if we were just to convert these to odds, just for hypothetical purposes, uh, we're gonna go home, draw, and away. Actually, what I'll do to make it even easier is I'm gonna do a very cool thing. I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna right click on the dashboard. I'm gonna go to move or copy. Then what I'm gonna do is we're gonna press create copy, okay. Then literally all I'm going to do is for all of these, I'm just going to do equals one over. Okay. But then obviously I'm not going to be so lazy that I'm going to just sit and do all the formulas. I'm just going to go equals one over this bit here. And then I'm going to drag all of that down in there. And then I'm going to do copy this into there. Then we'll drag that all the way down. Then I'm going to do equals, sorry, and then I'm going to do the same again there, so copy that into there, so copy and paste, and that should then do it all the same for there, so we have B, B25, whatever, yada yada, but obviously, I'm going to not do that because I'm going to lose my source format, and so what I'm going to do here, we're going to say equals, and then that one there, and then we can keep that source format, and then I can drag it all the way down, I'm, I'm lying to you there. I can go equals one over this one here. Perfect. And then obviously, I'll, well, I'll just drag it down. We'll do all the colors again in a minute in there. Perfect. So now we'll just do all these colorings again, which is not ideal, but we'll do it nonetheless because we kind of have to. Um, three, two in there. All these ones, this one. Oh. This one, this one, undo that one. And I believe that was red. Hopefully I've done the right cut. Wait, yes, perfect. And then obviously these ones here, we're going to do them as green. But as you can see now, we've got it in terms of odds rather than probability, which makes it a little bit easier to look at. Eventually, once I get it done, that should be green in there. There you go, perfect. And then what we can do again, is we can do the same for here so we can do this as do this one as equals uh, dashboard this one again we need the one over in there perfect drag that down and there again perfect and then we can just copy this one over there again we can paste it in there there and in there Again for there and there. And there you go, perfect. So now we've got all of the odds that we need in there, which is significantly easier. I presume it will be easier for you to look at in there, just to look at it in this sense. I'm going to put dashboard odds in there. So think about this in a logical way. We're going to show you a little example of why this won't be the best idea. So let's take 
um, a game in the Premier League coming up. What I'll do is I'll look at the upcoming games, but there's a specific team that I want to show you. Okay, so okay, the the best example I want to show you this specific thing. Okay, so we're going to go to the Premier League. We're going to set this equal to England, and we're going to press Select League. Okay, then what we're going to do is once it loads. Rather than picking the game ourselves, I'm just going to change this text split just for two seconds. And I'm going to show you an example of a team. And before I even let you know, I want you to tell me why it's happened, what's happened, and if there's something wrong with it, is it right? Basically, I want you to tell me all the ins and outs. So what we're going to do is we're going to just take an example that isn't, um, it's off last week, and it was Wolves versus Newcastle. So... If I put Wolves versus Newcastle, I want you to tell me exactly what the area is here and why this is happening. Okay, so it'll be like Wolverhampton, maybe. It might be the way it has it. Wolverhampton. There you go. So this is predicting 4-1 to Newcastle, okay? Which is, out obviously, we know the game actually finished 2-2, but let's go look at the odds here. And the odds have Newcastle at 1.4 away at Wolves. Wolves are 14.7. Given the fact Wolves are in decent form before this game, the over two and a half goals, uh, that this needs to be changed. This needs to be equals one over one minus one over that. And that gives us our odds. Look at that, we're having the over 3.5 at 1.24, which is way, 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 way too low. I'm assuming this game finished 2 2. But why have Newcastle such low odds? And why are Wolves so high when realistically, I know obviously Newcastle are a better team than Wolves, but odds of 14 for Wolves at home to Newcastle is way, way, way too high. Let me explain what the problem is here. Okay, so if we go to um, soccerstats.com. He says, once it loads, there you go. Here are the teams, okay? So we've got Wolves at home. Wolves have had five games at home. They've scored three one time. So they've scored one goal three times. And they've scored two goals twice. Okay, that's fairly, fairly average, okay? About roughly one and a half. Well, that's three. 1.4, we see goals a game, okay? They've conceded one goal twice. Two goals once. Three goals three times. Bear in mind, one of these is the Newcastle game because it's already happened, by the way, the, the two goals. And remember, they got beat 4-1 off Brighton earlier in the season. Okay, so maybe that is a bit of an anomaly, but roughly average. Let's take Newcastle's away form, okay? Newcastle away. It's good. Well, it's all conceded. Zero, one, Two twice and three once. Obviously, that would have been one, 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 one before this game happened because they did concede two away at Wolves. But again, fairly well spread. But then look at this. They've conceded, scored one. So it's scored zero once. That was away at Man City. Scored one time once. Scored twice, twice. And four plus once. This is what I need you to focus on. Newcastle won 8 0 at Sheffield United. So forget the, the, the score. F United 08 Newcastle 8 nil. Okay, now I want you to look at that and tell me what you think is wrong with a plus one model now. Okay, so bearing in mind Newcastle's average is 2.6 goals scored away from home, and that's in what one, two, three, four, five away games the average in 2.6 goals away. Okay, as you can see here. So let me show you this for a second. So if we take this Newcastle value, so they're, they're averaging 2.6 goals a game, and that's in five games. So they should have scored equals that times by that. 13 goals Newcastle have scored away, okay, in five games. Now, that's really good. 2.6 goals a game, that's great. But remember, eight of those goals were scored in one game, okay? So let's... Disregard that game for a second. That'll be four goals, four games, and obviously equals thirteen minus eight, which equals obviously equals five. But, but we'll just take it off like this, okay? And now let's just have a look at the number of goals per game. Equals that divided by that, one point two five, okay? 
Now, if we were to place in 1.25 rather than 2.16, so let's just replace this for two seconds, 1.25, the score goes all the way into, actually that's not worked, because obviously I need to do it in this page, 2.6, let's replace this with 1.25. The score goes to 2.1 and almost at the point of a 1.1, because if we had that at 1.22, for example, that goes to 1-1, one, one, okay? So that just proves to you that, that there's massive sway just off that one Sheffield United game has so much impact that it can change it to be... Let's get back to what it was before, just to make sure we have that. There you go. Just, just shows the importance of one game in this system. Again, you might be wondering why am I banging on about this, but basically that was a complete fluke result, okay? If we look at Newcastle's games this season, if we were to plot this uh, away games, average number of goals scored, it would be like 0, 1. Actually, I'm going to plot this for you really quickly. Let me show you this. So this is Newcastle's away games. Away goals scored. And we want, um, we have number of games. Okay. Now... I'm gonna make this. I'm gonna move this over here just to make it look a bit better, because uh, then it means I can expand both of these columns, so you can see what they are. So we had zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Right. So zero was, was one time, I believe. Here, yeah, so we have one, one, two, and then a one at eight as well. Okay. So one, one, two, zero, 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 zero. Eight okay. Now let me plot this for you, and we're just going to see how much of an outlier this actually is. So, if you plot this using the bar graph, look at that. So, that eight is so out of the way and so unexpected, but then the power of it is because it's got eight goals, it's pushed that mean all the way from 1.25 average goals scored away all the way down to so 1.25 all the way up to 2.6. And change the predicted score from 4.2, sorry, for, well, from almost 2 to 4.2, just off that mad swing. Remember, if this is 1.25 again, the odds now become, let's have a look at the odds now, 1.9, 3.9, yeah? Whereas before, when we had them at the value we had them at, 2.6, the odds were 14 and 1.4, which is absolutely insane. What I'm trying to explain to you here is because Poisson distribution is based off the mean value, as you can remember here, so we have the probability, and then this A2 value is our mean value. That means that because this, this A2 value is distinct based off this mean value, so our B2 value, essentially, the Newcastle value, is impacted by this 2.6 value, that means that Overall, our person distribution is going to be mad distorted in the favour of more goals being scored. Of course, Newcastle will score an average 2.6 goals a game. Of course they do. But that, that ain't no was a complete outlier. Okay? So, it doesn't mean Newcastle actually scored. Because if we take the median value, so if we had that plot up again, if I could get that plot. The median, if you remember how the median works. So, if we look at all Newcastle's games and we order the number of goals scored, it would be... Well, be one zero one two two eight. If you get the median of this data, it's the middle value. So it's two. Newcastle average two goals a game. So two point six is well higher than two. And therefore that eight value is so impactful that it causes a mad swing in the odds. We then think there's way more value. We could back Newcastle, obviously in the instance Newcastle didn't win, and therefore it wasn't worth back in Newcastle. So let's, let, let me just quickly show you on, on odds portal if I can. And then I'll wrap this video up. So if we go on results, um, you get that uh, Newcastle versus Wolves game. There it is there. So let's have a look at what the actual odds were. Okay. So it was, he says, there you go. The average was 4.22, 3.85, 1 1.85. Okay. Now, let me show you something amazing. So if we were to take this based off the old odds in there, so let me just write them back down again. 4.22, 3.85, and 1.85, I think we said. Perfect, okay. 
And now what we're going to do is we're going to write down what the odds are if we change that to 1.25. So if we change that 1.25 really quick, the odds become these values here. So what I'm going to do quickly, I'm just going to copy these values, copy, and we're just going to paste as a value in there. And then we're just going to fix this column again here. So it was X lookup and we want a way column F. So should equal 2.6 once we get this all loaded up. Perfect. So let's have a look at this. So, uh, and what we'll do is we'll copy that there in there as well to see if it's having to keep on going back and forth. And I'll label it accordingly. Okay, so in here, this is the actual odds. This is the predicted odds. Not including Chef United, not including A0. Uh, okay, and this is predicted odds, including A0. So I'll just copy that down and we'll get rid of the not in there and we'll change that to just including A0. Okay, now look at this. So we are well, well closer to predicting the actual odds when we've done it not including the 8 now and funnily enough if we'd use this technique for example here and we compare that to the actual odds we can see that the newcastle odds of 1.85 are a lot higher than we expect therefore we should back newcastle but obviously in the case that happened we shouldn't have backed newcastle because they didn't win and if we look at the predicted odds not including the 8 now we wouldn't have backed Newcastle because there wasn't enough value in the market. Of course, you wouldn't have backed the draw in either case, but significantly more in the second case. But we would have backed Wolves, which wouldn't have been that bad a shout. But it just proves to you that that 8 nil is so influential. I mean, look how much the odds changed. So it equals that divided by that. The odds went up by 3.67 times the original value. Okay, So what I'm trying to explain to you here is that Person distribution can be a good method because it's based off count data, but if you have an outlier such as an 8 nil, that can influence the data massively and really, really swing the data. Okay, so instead you might be better to use a negative binomial method or you could potentially use a zero inflated um, Poisson model. You can even use a linear regist logistic reg regression model. You can use historic events. You can do so many things. So in the next video, I'm going to show you how we can progress this and improve this model to make that a little bit more accurate. Hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, please leave a like, subscribe. If you haven't watched episode one, go back and watch it now. And yeah, um, if you want to see applications of testing methods on football matches, there's some videos here. Lay in the draw, back the favourite, over two and a half goals, all that on here as well. Thanks for watching.